Hello and welcome everyone. In this video I will show how I've made the Bayou Swamp Terrain. As reference I looked at some of these Louisiana swamps. I'll try to create something along the lines of this and then give it my own fantasy twist. Alright let's build this. I start off with this multiplex board I will use as a solid base for the terrain. Using a pencil, I've drawn out a random shape and the size I wanted. I then thought it would be a good plan to use this figure saw. Last time I've used this was at school like 20 years ago, however... A few inches later. So I didn't have a lot of patience that day, so I ended up just power tooling it. In order to smooth out the sides of the board, I will now use this Dremel tool here, but you could also use sandpaper. What I have here are a few types of foam. You could use these cheap polystyrene blocks and cut them into shape, but if you can get your hands on it, I would recommend this dense type of foam. I've drawn out the shape of the board and the foam using the board as a template. To cut the foam easy, I will now use my hot wire cutting table. This makes cutting foam a whole lot easier, as you basically have both hands free to create the shape that you're after. You could also use a sharp knife to cut the foam of course, and I will show you this in a second. So if you don't have a hot wire cutter, you could also use your hobby knife in order to make some straight cuts. Next up, I applied a layer of full strength PVA to the board, and then applied the foam onto it. I've also cut out a few smaller pieces, which I also glued in. When the glue had fully dried, I used some sandpaper and smoothed out the sides to make the layers even with the board. As the next step, I will make the basic shape of the water feature I will make for the terrain. You could cut it out with a knife or your Dremel tool, but the easiest way is to melt it. I will hold the piece upside down and then carefully melt away the foam, leaving the sides a bit higher. Now this type of lighter gives you a bit more control, but I've done it plenty of times with just a regular lighter. Probably the easiest and safest way to do this is using a small blowtorch I have here. You can find these at most hobby stores and they're not that expensive. Next up I will smooth out and strengthen the sides of the terrain piece. I use this type of wood filler to do this. I applied a thin layer of wood filler to make all three layers appear as one. When the filler had fully set, I then carefully sanded the sides. What I have here is some air hardening modeling clay. I will use this to make some small hills and then smooth it out using some water. 
If you had used several pieces of the white polystyrene I showed you earlier, then I'd recommend you apply the entire top surface with this stuff. When the clay had fully dried, I then applied a layer of this gesso primer I have here. This is the best primer you can get for making terrain, in my opinion. For maximum strength, I'm gonna apply it undiluted. This will leave some brush strokes on the sides, however, so in order to fix that, I'm going over it with this foam roller. When the primer had dried, I sanded the sides one last time using very fine grit sandpaper. As the next step, I applied a layer of full strength PVA glue to the upper surface. Afterwards, I applied a few types of fine sand to the base as the first layer of the groundwork. I thought it might be a nice idea to create a small bridge for the terrain. So I gathered a few pieces of balsa wood to do this. I first make one cut to determine the length of the planks and then make my long cuts in the same direction as the wood grain goes. If I did cut against the wood grain, the wood fibers would get shortened and they will bend and break easily. To make a more worn look to the planks, I cut off some of the edges here and there. When this was done, I created a frame using some of the wooden sticks. Now I obviously didn't get a degree in engineering, but there's nothing a little PVA glue won't fix. I glued the frame into position and put some weight onto it to hold it in place. Next up, I cut a few pieces of the round shaped sticks to serve as poles for the bridge. To give them a more worn look, I whacked them a few times with this hammer I have here. When this was done, I glued them onto the sides of the bridge. Alright, at this stage I will make some textured mud for the base. You could use any brand of acrylic paste for this, but I find this one from Liquitex works best. I wanted to make a ground cover that looks like mud with a lot of rotting vegetation in it. So I assembled these materials to do so. I then mixed in a few scoops of this paste along with the other materials and some acrylic paint to make it as disgusting as possible. The reason I use an acrylic paste for this is that it will dry like hard plastic but still remain a bit flexible. So if you accidentally bump into something, it will not crack or crumble. 
to say that looks terrible and I really apologize. I start off by applying this horrible mixture to the bottom where the water is going to be. This paste will dry very slowly, so we will have plenty of working time to add your other materials to it. What I have here are some tropical driftwood pieces I will use for the base. I sawed some of them in half using my Dremel tool, but you could also use a hacksaw. I found that if you saw them in half and turn them sideways, they kind of look like these tree stumps you see in swamps often, so I added a lot of them. Alright, so I highly doubt you've ever seen these before, but believe it or not, these come from nature. Now I know, they kind of look like some illegal smoking device, but you could really make some nice hollow trees out of them. I sawed off a few pieces of these and then split some in half to add to the base. I used some of the mud mixture to place them in. When this was done, I added a thick layer of mud mixture on the raised surfaces. I sculpted it very loosely, so it's easy to add in a lot of vegetation later. After letting everything dry for a few hours, I applied a layer of acrylic primer over it. But whatever you do, do not use a spray can on this, as the propellant in the spray can will melt the foam. I primed the wooden planks by hand and then attached them onto the bridge. Next, I applied a thin layer of raw umber to the entire piece. When this was done, I made a mixture out of these colors to paint all the tree trunks and stumps. I mixed in a few drops of English uniform to the mix to paint the bridge. As the next step, I will apply a few random greens, browns and greys to shade and highlight the terrain a bit. Afterwards, I applied a light dry brush over the raised areas of the tree stumps using green grey. Next, I will apply a few oil washes. You could use any type of wash you like, which in my case is an oil wash. I mix in a few drops of oil paint and then dilute them using odorless white spirit. I made a wash out of olive green and raw umber to wash the tree stumps and then added some Van Dyke brown to the deepest recesses. The little bridge was then washed using a mix of burnt umber and raw sienna. I then added a few washes to the soil. I applied them next to each other so they all blend by themselves. 
picked out some of the edges of the bridge using some green grey to make them stand out a bit more. Because we've used natural wood, the wood grain is already there, so I don't have to paint it. At this stage, I'm going to use some of these plastic plants as decoration for the base. Now you can pick these up at IKEA or a dollar store as they usually sell them. You could also pick them up at a pet store, but they usually charge you five times as much. I clip off a few pieces I want to use on the base. You could use them as they are now, but it's obviously much nicer if you take some time to paint them. These plastic plants are usually covered in some glossy substance. In order to paint them properly, we need to wash this off. I place all the plants in a plastic container and then soak them in some kitchen degreaser for half an hour. When this was done, I used a toothbrush to clean them a bit more and then rinse them in some clean water. Next, I will apply a coat of primer to them. Make sure you use a lacquer based primer as this will stick to the plastic much better. When the primer had dried, I then airbrushed them in some various green tones. I base coated them green first and then apply a lighter color from above. When this was all done, I followed up by adding a darker color from below. To bring out the leaves a bit more, I added some edge highlights here and there. When the paint had dried, I covered all of them with a coat of satin varnish to seal in the paint layers. So here we have the trees I made in my previous video. You can add them in at this stage, but for purpose of the video I will add them in later. Alright, time to decorate the base. So let's go all out this time and bombard this thing with scenery. As the first step, I cut off some twigs and leaves to serve as tiny water plants. I apply some dots of PVA glue and let them set a few minutes until they become tacky and then add the water plants. Next, I will apply some moss to the base. I have two types of store-bought here, and I also made two finer ones myself using dried herbs and a coffee grinder. I applied some PVA to some random spots, and then add the moss over it. I start with the coarser type and follow up with some of the finer moss for some variation. 
this step, I will dissect this plastic fern and turn it into a miniature version. I mixed up some more of the mud mixture and then add a drop where I want the plant to be. I then follow up by carefully adding the leaves until I think they look good. It's quite a precision work, but once dry, they will be rock solid. To make the ground a bit more interesting, I will now add a few dry pigments. I will apply them dry and seal them in later. I start off by adding dark mud pigment and then tone it down using some Russian earth. To add in a few green tones, I sprinkled in some of the homemade herb powder as well. Once I glue this in, it will blend with the other colors. At this stage, I added a few of these plants around the base. I then started making some other type of plant using these dry tree roots and some of the plastic leaves. I tried to replicate something along the lines of these plants shown above. I start off by attaching some of the tree roots and then carefully sticking the leaves between them. It's pretty flimsy at this point, but once glued they will hold fine. When this was done, I attached yet another type of plant we painted earlier randomly around the base. Alright, continuing on, here's some moss pads I will use on the base. I personally like these flat ones, but they are a bit harder to find. You could also use these types of grass tufts, however, I don't really like these because they are a bit too hairy in my opinion. So let's fix that. Now if you have a lot of patience, you could use scissors to make them a bit shorter, however, lazy as I am. I'm just going to run my beard trimmer over them. I applied these moss pads to some areas between the raised ground and the mud. 
some leftovers from a plant I forgot to water for about two years and I will use them now to make some dead leaves for the base. I've also clipped some small twigs of these dry tree roots. Because the leaves were a bit too bright for my taste, I diluted some brown ink with some water and then soaked the leaves in it. I then added the tree root bits and the dead leaves all around the base using some PVA glue. So this is some type of moss I picked up a few months ago and I just let it dry out to see what happened but it actually stayed quite firm and kept its color. So let's add these to the base. I added lots of these since I really like the color and texture of them. Moving on, here's some other type of moss I thought was interesting and I applied this mainly around the tree stumps. So at this stage I'm going to add in the trees. As I said earlier, I have a tutorial on these and I'll put a link in the description. I applied some of the mud mixture to the ground as well as the bottoms of the trees and then placed them in. Using some extra mud and a few sculpting tools, I work them in. To make some exposed roots, I used some of the larger pieces of the dried roots and also added some extra moss we used earlier around the trees. To bring some happiness to the base, I will now add some of these dried flowers. I attach them to one type of plant to make them a bit more interesting. So now we've reached an important step, which is gluing everything in place. I've made a recipe for this glue mixture listed below. 
pipette, I applied the glue mixture all over the scenery. I made sure to remove any spills right away using a wet sponge. When gluing in plants like this, you will have some excess glue pooling on the leaves which you need to remove. I used a wet brush to soak it back up. When this was all done, I started painting the sides of the base. I started off using black grey here, but that's only because I was almost out of black paint. I applied around four thin layers of black grey, and then the final two layers with black paint. This may seem like a lot, but keep in mind the acrylic paint is very weak. Next up, I will apply a layer of satin varnish to the whole terrain piece. As I mentioned before, you cannot use a spray can on this. So another option is to take some of the scenic glue and apply it using a fine mister. Make sure you clean the sides with a wet sponge after. I chose to use satin varnish for this, as this will give a slight glossy wet look, which is nice for making swamp terrain. Now because I've used a lot of natural materials, you might think it can collapse at any second. Now you obviously won't be able to play football with it, but because of the glue and the varnish, it's pretty sturdy. Alright, on to the most important step, which will be the water. Now if you've seen my previous videos, you know I always use two part epoxy resin for my water on terrain but please allow me to show you the difference between the two. I can give you a cheap alternative on almost anything, but for this I am gonna say, get the best quality you can afford guys. Now these milky kind of water effects are acrylic based, and I've had nothing but trouble using them. Here's an example. So here we have a little diorama piece I made a few years ago for several painting competitions. Because my local craft store was out of epoxy resin, I bought one of those milky acrylic ones, hoping it would work. You're supposed to pour them in thin layers and work your way up, but after 4 or 5 days it was still cloudy. So I ended up ordering and adding the epoxy resin after but the damage was already done, as you can see here. There's lots of huge air bubbles, and a lot of detail I made on the bottom you can hardly see. So by showing you one of my mess ups, I hope to have given you some more insight when you want to create deep water on future projects of your own. Alright, let's move on. Now if you want to add some color to your water, here's a trick you may want to use. As a test, I'd recommend measuring out the amount of resin you're planning to use, but as water instead, and then count how many drops of paint it will take to create the effect you're after. Once mixed, you can pour the water on a dark surface to see how it will look on your terrain. Keep in mind that even one drop of paint can mean the difference between transparent and complete opaque. Alright, so enough rambling, let's make this then. I start out with even parts hardener to resin and then stir it until it becomes crystal clear. 
needless to say, you add the paint after you've seen it's fully clear. This is the color I like for this project and I've listed the recipe below. Next up, we need to make sure we have a straight surface. I don't know how it's called in English, but I've used this thing to check. Alright, time to add the resin. As one of my summer jobs, I used to work as a bartender for a short period. So, I'm just gonna apply the Irish coffee technique for this. This resin can be applied in one time, but make sure you let it flow until you stop seeing tiny bubbles moving before you add more. I then brushed on some resin I had left over to all the bottoms of the trees, bridge and river banks. If you look closely, despite of the reflecting light, you can see the muddy bottom through the water, which is what I was after. This resin needs to dry for a few days and you're best off by covering it with a large tray against dust and possible insects. Make sure you leave a small strip open at the bottom, so the nasty fumes can escape. Any materials you've used with this resin are very hard to clean, so it's best to wipe them off with some paper towels and then keep them for your next project. Alright, so all we need now is a little life. I've painted up this little guy for this piece and he's gonna be king of the jungle until I finish my gator man I'm working on. So that brings us to the end of this terrain project. To make it easy for you guys, here's an overview of all materials I've used. Now that'll answer all your questions right there, but should you still have any questions, feel free to shoot me a comment anytime. So that'll wrap up this video, I really hope you've enjoyed watching it and that it was of any use to you. Instead of pictures, I decided to put the terrain piece on this little merry-go-round for a few spins to end things with this time. Alright, so I hope to see you in the next video. As always, thank you for watching, stay tuned for more, and take care. Work complete!